Welcome to this week's episode of Chop the Rock. I'm Diana Long with the Little Rock River Market, and today our guest is Holly Sanders, who is with the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission Nature Center here in the River Market District, and Holly is going to teach us all about Dutch oven cooking, which happens to be our state cooking vessel. It is, and thanks for having me today. Welcome. Uh, the Dutch oven is our state cooking vessel. Gov Governor Huckabee uh, assigned that in 2001. Okay. Um, and so uh, the Dutch oven has a lot of history with it. It actually came to Arkansas before we were a state. Oh, wow. So Dutch ovens and cast iron, you know, came from Europe, came over the ocean. So Dutch ovens have seen colonial fires. Uh, the Lewis and Clark used them in their expeditions. And of course, the uh, chuck wagon exploration used uh, Dutch ovens as well. But we can use them today. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about today's recipe okay. and what we are going to prepare. Okay, well today's recipe is Jetty May's uh, Panhandler Spaghetti. And uh, I got this recipe from Phyllis Spears, who's a retired Arkansas Game and Fish employee that many folks know. She used to do a lot of Dutch oven on AETN's uh, Arkansas Outdoors. Okay. And she's well known for that. So I've kind of used this recipe that she has. And I like this recipe because it's all in one. So you're gonna get your meat and your veggies and your pasta uh, all in one dish in your Dutch oven. And the way that the Dutch oven works is it is a convection heat. Oh. So we're, you use charcoal or, um, or wood, wood burning coals to provide your heat source. And uh, with the Dutch oven, you have a lid that has a lip on it. So it will hold the charcoal briquettes on the top. And then underneath the Dutch oven, which is a, a nickname, a camp oven, you have three feet. Gotcha. And so the feet are there so it can stand above your charcoal bed. Um, and so depending on the size of your Dutch oven and the degrees that you want to cook your recipe will depend on how many charcoal briquettes that you need. And so this Dutch oven is a 12 and so the lid of the Dutch oven will have the size of it which is the diameter of the lid. It's a 12 inch and most recipes are cooked at 350 degrees. Right. You know, right. give or take. And so uh, we kind of start with 350 degrees. And so with the 12 inch Dutch oven, we use a method um, that's three up, three down. It's called three up, three down. So for a Dutch oven, you would take the size of your Dutch oven, 12, and you would add three to go on top. So that's 15 charcoals on top. Gotcha. You would subtract three from 12, and that's how many charcoals you would put down. And that'll give you 350 degrees. That's a great, that's a great concept yeah. and great. Yeah. All right, so let's get started. Let's what, get started. What's the rest of this that we have here that goes into this recipe? Well, here? this panhandler spaghetti is wild, so we're using venison meat. So we have uh, deer meat here that I've already kind of skilleted up uh, with a little bit of garlic. Uh, we use fresh bell pepper and onion, uh, sharp cheddar cheese. Um, and then we, we, we have a few canned goods. Uh, we have uh, kernel corn mushrooms, uh, diced tomatoes, and then our spice today is gonna be Italian spice and some beef bouillon cubes. Okay, yeah. all right. And it's, so this is kind of a, a dump, what I call a dump recipe. You kind of I love dump those. it all together. Yeah. And so you'll have just a, a kind of a, a one pot meal right in here. So. Those, are, those are great because yeah. it's less cook it, uh, cooking in different things that you have to watch and it's way less clean up at the end of the meal. And who wants to be happy and right. stuffed after a meal <laughs> and have to do just a whole bunch of cleaning. Yeah. And so yeah. while you're dumping this in here, I mean, let's talk about venison. Obviously, if you're not into red meat or wild game, you can, you can substitute out. That's the fun thing you about can. cooking right. um, is that you can substitute so many things to your personal preference. But if you're into very eating healthy and lean meats and organics, right. it really doesn't get any better than <laughs> venison. It doesn't. Uh, we, we kind of call it uh, a wood to, a woods to table. So, um, you know, deer here in Arkansas or elk, that's about as organic as you can get from meat. It's very lean. Uh, if you um, skillet it up, you're going to find very little fat yeah. left over that you have to strain out. Uh, so it's very healthy and obviously organic. So uh, definitely it's, it's uh, and it's tasty. So. It really is. Mm -hmm. And in a lot of dishes, um, I, I know that 
growing up eating a lot of wild game, which is just the kind of family that I come from, and being a, a kid who might go, ooh, yeah. I don't, you know, then my parents would not tell me what was in it. Right. And they would, they would pretend like whatever we were eating was what I was used to eating. And then I would love it and ask for a second helping, and they'd say, oh. Yeah. <laughs> so you like the deer this, or the, you know, rabbit that, or whatever. And at that point, I was already sold on it, so I was totally right. okay with it. Right. And you can, you know, you can skillet this meat up right in here. So before we put the lid on, you can go ahead and put charcoal underneath it. And then you can um, saute your meat and get it brown. Um, put any seasoning that you like in it. A lot of times when I go camping though, I kind of pre-prep. I'm like, I might uh, go ahead and chop up my veggies or pre-cook a lot of my meat and put it in a Ziploc baggie and put it in the ice chest. And that saves me a little bit of time, like you said, you know, so instead of uh, cooking, I might get to hang out a little bit more with my family. Right. But I love cooking, so um, that's, to me, that's part of the camp experience. Sure, so yep. a quick question. If you are going to brown this meat in this pan mm -hmm. and then cook this, do you need to, would that require adding some charcoal afterwards? Yeah, or? I would probably add a little bit charcoal underneath it, um, just so it'll skill it up really quickly. Right, just for the browning right. part and then and then kind of restart that process with the correct amount of charcoal for the baking part. Right, correct. Okay, okay. Um, and what I what I have learned with uh, Dutch oven cooking, it's just like cooking at home. You make a lot of judgment calls. So maybe I have the correct amount of charcoal on top and bottom according to the charts, but maybe it's not cooking as fast as I think it is. You know, a lot of times the weather has a lot to do with that. Um, if it's really cold outside, you might need, need a little bit more charcoal. If it's really hot, you may not. With these canned vegetables, they come um, with li in their own liquid, so you want to not drain the vegetables. So we're so going to put liquid. in some mushrooms. And you don't need to um, pre-cook the onion or green pepper that I, pulled in, I, I put in there because the liquid is what is going to cook our pasta. We're gotcha. gonna put our pasta in there dry. So we're just gonna spread that around. We've got our kernel corn. So you had about one whole white onion. Um, and, and one green pepper. One green pepper, kind of coarsely chopped. Right. Um, then you've got the two small cans here, which is a total of eight ounces of the mushrooms. If you didn't like mushrooms, but you like something else, right. just sub that out. Uh, one can of whole kernel sweet corn. And, and then this then is a- This is a large 28 ounce uh, diced tomato um, as well. You know, and maybe you have some canned tomatoes, you know, right. uh, so that would, you know, be great. Just make sure you get that liquid in there. And then we're going to put uh, four bouillon cubes in there, if you want to help me unwrap those. Sure. And about a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. You know, and if you really like basil, like I love basil, you might could put some fresh basil in there. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're camping, you know, you may not bring you know, the fresh basil with Just you, a but. bunch of different things too. I mean, you know, and so this blend of Italian seasoning kind of covers a little bit of right. everything. So you only have to have one jar, right. which means you're packing lighter ultimately. And that's always a good thing when you're right. packing up. I, I kind of like a campground that's not overcome with, with items. And so right. I try to keep my kitchen uh, tidy and less is better. Right. And then I have some uh, sharp uh, shredded cheddar cheese here and I'm just going to put about half of that uh, in here and save the other half for later we'll put on top okay and that's a couple cups as eight ounces eight ounces so. for the whole for the whole uh, bowl gotcha and then our spaghetti and you can use any type of spaghetti noodles that you want to um, they don't, they usually come in about 16 ounce boxes and you're not gonna use the whole box. Gotcha. So we're gonna use about 10 ounces, which I eyeball. And um, what you're gonna wanna do is uh, break them up kind of small. So we'll break these up. It doesn't have to be perfect, 
but you don't want them super long. Gotcha. All right. So, um, so we've got about 10 ounces of noodles in there hard, and I kind of mix them in, and so they're going to get down into that liquid. And then meanwhile, while you're making this, we've had our charcoal. We would have had our charcoal ready to go. And so we would put the lid on here, and then we would move the Dutch oven uh, to our charcoal bed. Gotcha. And with this one, it is 350 degrees. It's the 12 inch. So we, we put about 15 to 18 charcoals on top and nine on the bottom. And nine on the bottom. Right, and so that's gonna cook 30 to 40 minutes and um, turning the lid about a quarter of a turn every so often, you know, just to get that even. But if you forget to do that, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, it's still gonna cook. <laughs> well, and you wanted to, looking at the recipe, you wanted to kind of check that halfway and maybe stir it up. Right. But you don't wanna open your lid a whole bunch of times. Just like when you're baking in an oven, the more times you open that oven to, to look in, the, the more times that you let some of that heat out and then it has to kind of readjust right. to get, keep that constant temperature and so. Right, with this one, you'll wanna check about 20 minutes in and give it a stir because you may have some of the noodles on top that aren't getting the liquid. Right. So you'll move them down uh, into the liquid and make sure um, uh, it gets cooked. And um, I always say, use your nose. So maybe the recipe says 30 minutes, but maybe it's really hot outside. So it might cook faster. So if you really start smelling it, especially if it's a baked item like cinnamon rolls or biscuits, you know, you're gonna wanna check it. Yeah, um, that's good. My yeah. rule for baked goods like biscuits or cakes um, is about um, a quarter away through your time, cooking time, remove the charcoals from the bottom and put those on top. And that way it won't burn, but it'll brown. Oh, nice. Top. Okay. So a lot of times folks are like, I cook biscuits in the Dutch oven, but they always burn on the bottom or, or they get really dark on the bottom. So just move those charcoals off the bottom, you know, about, you know, 20 minutes into your cooking time and then put them on top and then it, it probably won't burn on the bottom if you do that. So that's a little tip. Uh, every fall uh, in November, I do a basic Dutch oven class. Uh, so to be the first Sunday in November, you can sign up for that and uh, you will learn all about Dutch oven cooking, how to do it. And then we will make about five recipes, oh, wow. uh, cook them and then eat them. Great. So it's, it's a great workshop. And then in February, I do a Beyond the Basics Dutch oven cooking. Uh, February is when uh, the Dutch oven was named our official vessel. So it's kind of celebrating that. But I'll do an advanced course um, where even if you're, if you're a novice, you're welcome to come. But we'll, we'll kind of do more complicated recipes um, or use more wild game meat or do the stacking or there's a, a other trip, uh, tips and tricks that you can do with the Dutch oven, like how to make it into a bunt type oh, wow. pan and okay. that kind of thing. And so we kind of explore that. And so that's, that's in February that we'll have that. And I believe this year, uh, the theme for February is gonna be wild about pies. So we'll do pizza pies, meat pies, and sweet pies. That's fantastic. Yeah. So today we have learned about the Dutch oven cooking, how you can get some more information about that, where you can go and, and, and learn exactly how to do it in a, in a class type setting at the Nature Center. Um, and I think that, that one of the cool things that we wanted to showcase here today, besides this amazing way to cook, was that there's so much more about the Nature Center than just walking through and looking at exhibits. And right. so you have the Dutch oven classes, you can pick up your fishing license there. You can, you can even buy your lifetime fishing license there now. Right. I know that y'all have archery classes and different programs throughout the year that, that really, you know, kind of help um, teach kids and adults too. It's not just for children and it is a free admission. Right. Yeah, uh, our, one of our missions at the Nature Center is to help people find their outside. So whatever that may be, it may be through hunting and fishing, it may be through photography or hiking or canoeing, bird watching or even cooking. So we try to offer uh, programs or workshops to help people gain those skills uh, to get them outside uh, more often. But we also have programs that highlight the fish and wildlife of Arkansas, you know, to help people learn about the animals that live around them outside and the plants. 
Um, so when they do go outside, uh, they can see so much more uh, around them. So we, uh, we do programs for the little toddlers all the way up to seniors. So um, everyone's welcome and it's always free thanks to the one eighth of a cent conservation sales tax uh, here in Arkansas. That is yeah. fantastic. And right here in the River Market District, um, so easy to get to, um, you know, just walking right on down. And yep. tell, me, tell me what the Nature Center's hours are. Uh, we are open Tuesday through Saturday, 8 to 4.30, and on Sundays, 1 to 5. Okay, great. Yeah. And sometimes if we do, we may have clinics in the evening, but we'll advertise that. And so sometimes we do evening events as well. Well, thanks so much for coming on and thanks sharing this. Me great technique and all this information and the food is delicious so I'm gonna I'm ready to end the show yeah. so that we can eat now right <laughs> absolutely I want to thank y'all for joining us for this week's episode of chop the rock and stay tuned for our next episode again if you're looking for more information about the Witt Stevens Jr. Nature Center um, you can visit them online at uh, agfc.com agfc.com or look for their Facebook page Great. Thank you. Thank you for having me.